the 2023 season is underway. Under pressure, fires down the middle, intercepted. Amani Hooker. Stakes, all of it, you know. So, you know, there was a, a couple bright spots, but on the whole, just have to be better uh, in a lot of different areas. But I don't think we gave one away. We just, too many mistakes. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGeek. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Titans season opener Sunday in the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. Saints win it 16 to 15. Mike, first of all, welcome back to another season of your show. Appreciate it, buddy. This is amazing. So great job to everybody that made this happen. Well, a lot of, a lot of people put in a lot of work to make this look like it does. We're proud of it. In terms of the game on Sunday, 48 hours removed now, starting to wrap it and turn your attention to the Chargers tomorrow. Final thoughts as you've looked back over the last two days? Well, I mean, we've had to, we'd have we have to get past this, you know, much before tonight. Um, but I would say the final thoughts are uh, ju just not good enough, just not consistent enough. Uh, we didn't get into drives. We were behind the chains offensively, made a few plays, um, missed, missed more than we made. Um, defensively good, um, not great, not consistently great, wasn't great when we needed to be great, uh, third down and there at the end in the four minutes. So uh, special teams obviously had the punt blocked, it's, you know, we kicked field goals, but, you know, we'll, we'll be better. Uh, we'll get back to work and uh, we're excited about it. One of the great things about the start of the day overall in New Orleans was actually the opening toss as Tim Shaw, Tennessee Titan for life, right there with the head coach, and Steve Gleason, also visiting with the head coach, former Saints safety, were the honorary captains for the two teams. This moment meant a lot to everybody in New Orleans and Nashville and in between who loved these teams. Well, it was the right thing to do, and it, was, uh, it meant a lot to us. It meant a lot to the Saints, but most importantly, it meant a lot to Tim and Steve. And, that, that's what this is all about, and hopefully, you know, raising awareness to a, a sickening disease uh, that ALS. Absolutely. Let's take a look now at Mike Vrabel's six-pack presented by SeatGeek, and we have to go no further than the first play of the year. The opening kickoff, Amani Hooker starting safety makes a play on special teams. And, and again, we've talked about our, our right to earn and cover kickoffs, and this is something that we can do. And, we, you know, we've worked all year and all offseason about breaking a stiff arm down and knowing that the ball could be loose. And, you know, just a fantastic individual play uh, by Hook. You know, as he pushes this guy to the sidelines, breaks a stiff arm down, the ball's loose in his outside arm, and they will you know, recover it in one motion. Again, would have liked to have it you know, called correctly on the field or even in replay assist and, and save myself and the team the challenge, but that didn't happen either. A lot of the Titans newcomers showed up in this ball game on Sunday. Let's talk about number 49, Arden Key, the first sack. Well, he's had a great offseason. He was one of our award winners and, and worked extremely hard to, you know, again, when we talked to Arden in the offseason, it was, do you want to play 400 snaps? Do you want to play 800? And, he said, I want to play 800, and that's good because the more he plays for us, uh, the more successful he's going to be and the more impact that he's going to have on our team. So, you know, he's, he's worked hard to be in condition to play a lot of snaps and, and affect the game the way he did. Arden Key had an NFL high 11 quarterback pressures in week one. Let's go back to another Amani Hooker play right at the end of the first half. Seventh career interception. Well, it saves us points. You know, they, they hit a conversion. They hit a play there actually on Amani earlier in this drive. And uh, I think that this is a great testament to just the growth and, and who we want to be is, you know, we got to focus on the next play. And, and two plays later, you know, they try to hit four verts down the seam. Amani sinks and, you know, is able to save some points there at the end of half. Early in the third quarter, the Titans get a chance to see their first ever carry from New Orleans native. He's actually from Ponchatoula, 
This is Tajay Spears. Well, I think he caught everybody a little off guard. He, he kind of bounced it outside, and, and when you do that on a particular run like this, you know, you're kind of on your own. You can see you know, the corner and, and the linebacker and everybody running, and I think he was a little quicker than, than, than Marshawn thought he was going to be, and to able to you know, get upfield, and I say that was the quickest 17 yards we've seen in a while. Head coach was happy about that. I was. Yeah, I was excited. All right, let's take a look now. First play of the fourth quarter, Titans converting a third down Tannehill to DeAndre Hopkins. Well, it's a good part. It starts with a good pocket, and it starts with, you know, guys getting open. Again, we have to have third and, and less than, you know, eight or nine like we did, but that was the pocket that we need. You see the game inside, Hop coming into the quarterback's vision, and it all starts with the protection. You know, there it is, a good clean pocket, and, and he'd be able to complete a third down conversion. Seven catches on the ball game for DeAndre Hopkins, 65 yards. Four catches for 58 yards for Nick Westbrook Akine. This one went for 24 yards. Yeah, and, and then again, you see the defender trying to take a chance. Ryan with good ball placement outside where only Nick could catch it, uh, not running out of bounds, uh, taking a short gain, catch and run, and, and giving us an X play right there. Nick continues to be a guy that whatever you ask him to do, he does it to the best of his ability. That's a pro. He knows a lot of positions, plays special teams for us, and, and you know, is it helping in the passing game and in the special team? So he's a valuable asset. All right. Those are the six pack of plays sponsored by SeatGeek here on the Mike Vrabel Show. When we come back, the head coach shows us a play in film study that was a big one for the Titans and one that they hope they can use more this season. That's coming up next as you watch the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Stay tuned. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek continues, and we've got a new contraption for the head coach. He gets a chance to give us a little film study, and what we're going to see with this that we're really excited about, a first and 10 play, 40, 429 to go second quarter, Titans at their own 30. This one goes well, coach. Show us why. Yep. So, again, a normal formation that this is a formation that we're in a lot. Okay, so obviously two tight ends, two receivers, Derek back behind uh, the quarterback. Um do a lot of different things out of this. We can run our power scheme, we can run our zone scheme, play action pass, keeper game. But what you're gonna see here is we're gonna work Derek through and then back here to the weak side, trying to sell a couple double teams here and here as we work back, Fannin, and then let him up the field. You're gonna see the normal play action pass route that we would normally throw, deep shot, whatever it may be, but then marrying it with a screen. Great way to get Derek the football off of something that we normally do. So let's see how this works, and you'll see it from the end zone. So here, uh, as we start to play, you can kind of see here, there's the double team. So you get run action, you get the linebacker to run through, and then Derek's able to slip out with a lot of space back in here. So you see the receiver selling it. Brew just has to get up to the one week safety, and you'll see him able to slip out from, from blocking the nose guard. That's what 21 miles an hour looks like. Okay, that's what 21 miles an hour looks like. That, however, Coach Mike is not 21 miles an hour. You're anymore. moving good though, Coach. No, not good enough. So let's take a look <laughs> at it from the end zone because this is how we have to be able to marry plays and be able to get things understood where we're able to sell these things with Derek here and then back out. But this is the guy right here that we got to get and you can see how brew like you said uses his athleticism yeah. to get out in space everybody sells it peter loses inside and now we're able to get derek and a whole bunch of space right there lineman not down the field illegally but peter's supposed to lose inside Co that's correct. what you're talking correct. about when we would throw a pass we want to talk about inside out but we're trying to create this space over here for derek so peter kind of sells it and then loses back inside and is still able to kind of get up here and get a hand on Saunders. All 11 men do the job to make that work. Well, certainly. Well, those are the plays that we need to get to Derek and be able to sell and marry that off of formations that we are normally doing a lot of different things out of. Great job. That was super. Thank you. This is awesome. All right. So the Epic Western Spotlight is next. And one of Coach Vrabel's favorite stories of the preseason is included in this. Stay tuned as the Mike Vrabel Show continues, presented by SeatGeek.
Time for the epic Western spotlight on the Mike Vrabel Show. Defensive line coach Terrell Williams is one of the most respected people within the walls of Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. He's been a defensive line coach in college and in pros for nearly 25 years, but while he's good at his job, he's more than just a position coach. He's a, a guy who encourages people. He's a friend to people. He's an ear that the players feel like they have at all times, an encourager. Well, this past winter, a knock on the door from Mike Vrabel added a formal title to his overall role. So I was sitting in my office in the dark, burning a candle like I normally do. And, um, and he um, came over, shut the door and said, hey, I want to do this. I want to make you an assistant head coach nothing's really going to change because of what you do already you know I don't a title for me doesn't doesn't change who I am or what I do with this football team I, I care about the football team um, anybody that knows me know that I, I love the, these football players he had more Terrell Williams news for the media on August the 7th just five days ahead of the preseason opener at Chicago Terrell Williams will act as the head coach uh, for Chicago uh, starting on Friday. So I think this is a great opportunity uh, for him and for, for us and everybody involved. So uh, Big T will handle that. Clint will handle the, the defensive line. The move was wildly popular with the Titans players. They and everyone else saw Terrell Williams ace his pregame press conference. He then blew away the broadcast crews in his production meetings. His defensive linemen well, they see it every day, so they were not surprised. I know he's going to do a great job. Um, you know, probably one of the moments he's been waiting for it, um, even though, you know, he is just for a weekend right now. But, you know, hopefully eventually, you know, that, that job come available for him um, in the future. And then it was time for the game. Terrell Williams patrolled the sidelines at Soldier Field as the Tennessee Titans head coach. Let's go, Sammy. Let's go. Come on, dog. Knock somebody back. I got to go down with my guys, the, the linemen. <laughs> I got to go with my guys. Good, Tajay, good. Touchdown. Good job, boys. Good job. Jog it off. Run off. Hey, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Our ball, our ball. Offense. On the ball. On the ball! On the ball! Oh, yeah! Good job, Otis! Good job, Otis! Sup, 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 sup. Oh, that was fun. That's Big T, Terrell Williams. And that was a special weekend for the Tennessee Titans, for everybody who who is around the team, loves the franchise. And for Terrell, he said it was just an amazing experience that you gave him the chance to have. Yeah, it was not It was nothing that I gave him. He earned it. Uh, that's the most important thing that I want everybody to understand is – and nothing's changed. Uh, and his, Like he said, being the assistant head coach, he loves this football team, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, we're lucky to have him. You know, we've got a great staff excited about the, you know, the growth that we're all going to continue to make with this football team. All right, Terrell Williams getting a chance to run the show for the Titans, and certainly his defensive lineman played very, very well in the game last Sunday and will continue to throughout the rest of the year because his groups always do. After the break, we've got something very special. One of the youngest Titans has a hard-hitting question for the head coach. I bet. Yeah, here we go. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek with the kids. We continue with the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. Coach loves the sessions with the media where he gets to answer questions. You just you did favorite that. part of my job. Probably is right. Yeah, absolutely. Other than doing these shows with me. Yep. Yeah. That, something like this that. This is two. <laughs> Media's first. <laughs> Media's first. So we figured because he loves it so, we would open up this this portion of the program for a hard hitting question. Here we go. Let's see what you got. Good. Be like my Richard. normal media my session. My name's Emmett, and I'm six years old. And I'm wondering, do, do you like
like being a player or a coach better? Good question, Emmett. Yeah. Uh, do I like being a player or a coach better? I would tell you to try to play as long as you possibly can. It is, this is, uh, love coaching, love it, but this, there's something about playing in the National Football League. And uh, so, again, having been lucky enough to do both, um, playing, playing in this league is, is something that, that I'll cherish forever as well as coaching. 14 years. Pretty good stuff. Yep, yep. Um, but, it, you know, better than having a real job. It is you know truly I mean? better. It's beats for having a real job. But you, I think to Emmett's question, though, what I wonder is when we see you running with Derrick Henry down the sidelines, there, there's still some of that number 50 in there a little bit, well, and, yet, and yet you have to temper it as you become a coach. Yeah. I mean, whatever I did as a player, that's, it's never going to – I've said this ad nauseum. Never going to help us be successful. Now, some of those experiences that I can explain or talk to or guys that I played with, um, different experiences, I think maybe that helps. Um, but that's just part of my, my package and how I'm trying to do the job and try to relate to these guys and make a connection with them. And, you know, but ultimately try to hold them accountable and, 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 and win. I think Emmett did a whale of a job. It was amazing. I love that segment. All right. So he loves it. So we'll do it again Better next week. Mike's questions. <laughs> if it, what? Nothing. I, uh, Emmett did a nice job. Thank you. If he uh, if he didn't, we wouldn't do it anymore. But we'll do it again next week. Thanks, Emmett. Emmett you want to host? Let's go to break now on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. And as we do, let's take a look at the new Titan Stadium. Stadium in '60. This is Stadium in 60, a quick update on the Titans' new stadium. The new Titans stadium will feature a versatile community space. The hope is that this facility is constantly in use. Johari Matthews is a Titans vice president and executive director of the Titans Foundation. So it is 12,000 square feet that we hope can be used as a multi-purpose area for community groups, nonprofits, a convener of spaces for organizations that may need a place to come and meet to talk about what's happening in the city of Nashville, but also for programming. We want people and our neighbors in the community to really see us as a part of Nashville beyond just football. We want our neighbors to see us as a trusted organization that they can lean on, but also as an organization that shows up in time of need, but also in times of celebration. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGate continues with Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success, the opponent Sunday at Nissan Stadium, home opener, the Los Angeles Chargers. Key number one, score touchdowns in the red zone. Yeah, we just had too many drives that stalled um, in the high red. And then when we got down there, um, self-inflicted wounds, you know what I mean? First and 15, second and 20, uh, behind the chains. And, and so you just, we, we've got to be able to get down there, get it, get the ball inside the 10-yard line. You know, we've been really good in goal-to-go situations uh, for a while now. So, you know, let a lot of our stuff work and get it, get first and goal inside the 10 and be able to score touchdowns and, and not going to win games kicking field goals in this league. Yeah, most efficient red zone <clears throat> offense over the last four years, so you certainly just have to get back to your standard. That's all. That That's it, but, you know, it just doesn't happen. You right. Know? You have to do it. You have to go prove it. Uh, it's not what you've done. It's what you're going to do and what you will do. Key number two on the Nissan Keys to Success – Affect the quarterback, he being Justin Herbert, and make him uncomfortable. Yep, he, you know, I mean, he can stand there. They ran the football really well last week, and, and again, we'll have to handle those things if they do it. But again, he's got big weapons. Um, he knows where he wants to go with football. He can run. He can scramble. He scrambled for, you know, from uh, first downs on third down. Um, he knows where his check down is. He knows really where he wants to go. So we we'll have to change coverages. Try to, you know, rush him with four, uh, pressuring him. You know, if you're not, if you don't have a guy free, he's going to make you pay uh, when you pressure him. So again, we'll have to make him uncomfortable in in coverage and in rush. And of course, there's a special teams key: be great tacklers on special teams and on defense. Well, obviously, defense, and they're going to make you a space game. They'll spread you out with three wides out there one way, and if they like the numbers, they'll throw the bubble out there. But on special teams. 
you know, Davis has got six kickoff returns or, excuse me, um, special teams touchdowns in college. He had one in preseason. So if you give him some space, this guy can go. So we'll have to cover these kickoffs and cover these punts, which, you know, gives us an opportunity to make a play. You saw them in December. Does that help? Uh, maybe, but, but it'll, get, it'll be a different game. They get a new coordinator, new players, and, you know, we'll have to play better. Let's get a win on Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah. Back home on Sunday, the Titans and the Chargers, 12 o'clock kickoff. We hope to see you there. Thanks for watching The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM Studio. Have a great night, everybody.